I love academic papers, and let's take a look at this one, written by Dandan Chao, Huaxia Roy, and Chan Xiong. Uh, AI and freelancers, has the inflection point arrived? Okay, what do they mean by the inflection point? And we'll go through this paper together. The inflection point is the point where machines surpass human performance to the point where you will see human displacement in a given area. Right. And what's very interesting about this study is there's I want to break this down into two different parts. One is a theoretical framework, which I don't have that many problems with. The other one is the actual practical framework as to how the data that was generated to base these findings was found. So let's go through this, right? First, what are the main findings? Let's cut right to the chase. These uh, researchers, they study two main markets, one web developers, one translators. And this is where it begins to get crazy for me from an, uh, a research integrity perspective. Here you can see they say, we use a popular online labor platform as our empirical context. They don't name what platform was used. They just claim it's popular. Uh, there are many different online platforms. Every online platform will have different behaviors, different dynamics. The fact that it's not named really puts a big dimmer on the um, veracity, not necessarily veracity, but on, 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 on just how much you can hold on to the data that was found, right? It, a, for better data management, they should be at least a few platforms should have been used and the data should have been compared across these platforms. The platforms should obviously be named as well. But as far as the findings goes, let's let, let's cut right to it and we'll go back, right? So they examined a total of 6,743 workers from the construction and design OLM, web construction and design, and then 7,582 workers from uh, the translation and localization space and 15,000 workers from the web development and OLM is what they call online marketplace. And yeah, they removed the inactive workers who had not accepted any jobs before November 1st, 2022. They considered November 30th, 2022 when chat GPT 3.5 was released. That's what they consider the impact date. They, they're saying here, we utilize the launch of chat GPT as an exogenous shock released on November 30th, 2022. And what's another thing that's important is that they consider November after November, that November 30th, 2022, the only exogenous shock to be studied is ChatGPT. We have enormous economic factors that are also impacting the study. We have platform specific factors that could be impacting the study, but we're isolating it as if ChatGPT was the only exogenous shock in this study. Again, I can understand the rationale, but questionable as far as the integrity of what's being proposed. And as we as, as we go down here um, and we, we get to the actual findings, this is what they're saying. They're saying that for, for translations, the coefficient ChatGPT U, and, and the, the, again, there's a lot of theoretical framework I want to abstract from that, and I just want to focus on the actual findings is negative and statistically significant. So what it's saying, suggesting a decrease in workers' earnings from local focal jobs by 29.7%. They're saying that translators in this platform made 29.7% less money. Now, they're also saying on the converse side that web developers made 66.5% more. So they're saying, furthermore, the launch of ChatGPTU significantly increases the total monthly earnings by 66.5%. So they're saying, the, the theory behind this is they're saying, translators, they made less money. They made on average, approximately 29.7% less money. Why? Because ChatGPT was good enough to replace them, ChatGPT 3.5. And web developers, they were not impacted by chapter 3.5 or 4.0. They're actually making more money because of that. But the hypothesis is that if it continues to evolve, it'll reach an inflection point where they too will be displaced, right? So that's kind of like the the the, the main central tenant of this paper. Again, from a, from a data perspective, this data is all based on modeling. So if we take a look here at models, uh, there's, they're using uh, AI Occupational Exposure Index introduced by Felton and the Google Search Volume Index, SVI. So they're not really using actual 
occupational data. So for instance, they're not polling translators as a whole and asking them how much money did you make month by month. And another thing that happens very, very frequently with freelance translators is that they make their money from multiple revenue streams. They have direct clients, they work for agencies, they work on on online marketplaces. And what's super important here is that translation, if you're in the translation space, you know that the translation work that flows through a online marketplace is typically the simplest, most transactional work. It makes sense that the simplest, most transactional work gets chewed up, let's say, by advancement in GPT. And by the way, we have a study that you can also link to where we can show that as good as ChatGPT 3.5 is, and I believe it's an amazing tool, from a translation performance perspective, it's actually not that much diff better, if at all, compared to big machine translation providers like Microsoft or Depot or Google or AWS. So it's not like it was a huge breakthrough in machine translation. Maybe, yes, maybe it was a breakthrough as far as public awareness, as far as the prowess of machine uh, capabilities, but in itself, not that big of a deal. Now, what's uh, again, what's interesting is that the claim is it, it, it's, it's extrapolating from this claim and it's saying that w the claim of this paper, and, and let go, let's go back to it, over here once more towards the end, is the finding strengthens our model showing that once AI crosses the inflection point of a job, it cannot revert it to being below the inflection point with further AI upgrades. So what it's saying is that once it reaches that inflection point and it, and it thinks that it reached that inflection point with translation and localization, there's no going back. Freelancers are gonna be replaced. The fact that it, that it created this 29% initial decrease is the sign of a trend that's only gonna continue. Now, I have my serious doubts on that. Again, nature of, of content. The content that gets easily replaced by machine translation is typically low-hanging transactional content. Maybe it's a document that just needs to be understood. Maybe it's a web page from a company that's not that visible. The more exposure you have in a content, so maybe it's regulated by a health agency. Maybe it's gonna, um, it could put people's lives in danger. Maybe it's informing uh, consumers about risks and conditions in the products. So the more exposure that there is in language, the less likely it is to be entirely co-opted by uh, a machine. It's We're still likely to see humans at least verifying it. That's one part of the spectrum. The other thing is not just from exposure, but from a emotional appeal perspective. The more emotionally appealing that language needs to be, the more likely that you're still going to have humans looking at it. So again, what I find particularly interesting about this paper is that with all of their data and analysis, they're saying, in essence, right, web developers, you're safe, at least for now, you're going to make more money because this technology is an enabler, translators, sorry, you're screwed, you have to leave the space. <laughs> and, 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 and it's even funnier when, when they begin to analyze um, the, the impact on senior translators versus less senior, senior translators. Take a look at this. We find an elevated negative effect of ChatGPT on experienced translators compared with less experienced translators. ChatGPT's proficiency in translation may diminish the competitive advantage of experience. I'm going to stop right there. I would say the exact opposite. If anything, ChatGPT only exacerbates the need for you to have a more experienced translator for very specific needs. Sure, again, for transactional, low-hanging volume, maybe that's great. Maybe you don't need that junior translator anymore for certain kinds of situations. But if you're talking about copywriting, if you're talking about owner manuals, if you're talking about things that impact um, research material, um, R&D for pharma, if you're talking about things that impact people's lives, then you're talking about having subject matter experts almost as a, not. it's not even something optional, it's a basic need. The other thing is the more experienced a translator, that's when it gets harder and harder for GPT to compete with them. That's all our research shows that as well. It's like for simpler cases, yeah, sure, you know, you can use GPT and it, it could pass by, let's say, a junior translator pretty well. Once you get more and more sophisticated, that's when it's going to start breaking down. Now, the explanation here is very interesting. It's saying, therefore, experienced translators who previously grabbed a larger market share, and again, this is what's very funny, in my understanding of translation and localization, experienced translators seldom 
are in online marketplaces, right? Experienced translators, they're the ones who typically have direct clients. They're the ones who typically have very large contracts with agencies. They're the ones who are most requested. They're not feeling this, in my opinion, at all. Therefore, experienced translators who previously grabbed a larger market share can no longer do so in the post-chat GPT world. That's a very strong statement, which I completely disagree, and are hence more heavily impacted. Oh, this is the alternative they're suggesting. Alternatively, experienced translators might be more alert to the looming challenges in the translation and localization OLM, thereby consciously choosing to exit the market entirely. That doesn't make any sense. They're saying that an experienced translator feels is so alert to the trends that are taking place that they're deciding on like ChatGPT is launched on November 30th. They've worked on this. Uh, this is their career for the past 20, 30 years. And all of a sudden, they're like, no, I look at GPT and it's good. It's so good that I should leave. I should leave the sector entirely. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If we go on here, thereby consciously choosing text at the market. In contrast, we find no heterogeneity between experienced and less experienced web developers, indicating that productivity boost by ChatGPT is less dependent on freelancers' experience. So that is, web developers, juniors, seniors, experienced, less experienced, you're all good. You're going to make more money. Everybody's in the clear. Translators, sorry, you're screwed. Get out. Find a new job while you can. I honestly could not disagree more with this uh, paper. I think it, I commend the authors for doing, like I said, I, I think the theoretical basis for it is quite sound without getting too much into it. But I like the fact of how they use the different indicators, how they use Google searches versus the actual and versus propensity scores. How, I mean, I'm, I don't question the integrity of the paper from an academic perspective, but as in most situations, whatever is real for academics isn't necessarily real in the real world, right? And the real world is about people, and it's about people using technology. And what we're seeing, yes, in certain situations when you have translation that, we, that is considered very low-hanging, easy to replace, yes, that will be co-opted by transla machine translation. That's been the case since the early 2000s. I mean, machine translation has been getting, getting better and better. You already see entire support libraries being translated by machine translation on its own. That's You see machine-generated content in all kinds of forums, like you, you can go on social media platforms and request a post to be machine translated. That's already commonplace, and it's been commonplace for many, many years. Now, getting translators out of a job, that's an entirely different situation. Again, the other thing that is not taken into account is that a very small percentage of the work that should be translated or could be translated is actually translated. Why translation right now is a very expensive thing. So most languages, most companies, they cut back on markets that they were going to translate into, variants that they're going to translate into, content that they're going to translate. And the result is that they're maybe translating 5%, 10% of the content that would, they would actually like to translate. So companies are very aware of um, cost dynamics when it comes to translations. So in my opinion, my hypothesis is that technology is actually a revenue enabler in the sense that more content can be translated. Yes, you will have displacement of certain types of translation. Like I said, for instance, more transactional translations, lower hanging, lower impact translations are likely to be entirely machine translated, whereas higher impact translations are likely to have a much higher degree of human intervention. So more subject matter experts, more specific subject matter experts. Like let's say maybe you know 20 years ago, it was fine. Just find someone in Germany and they can do it. Then as the industry evolves, okay, it's not just someone in Germany, it's someone with five years of, of experience in mechanical engineering. Now, you know, the, the industry continues to evolve. Now it's no longer five years of experience in mechanical engineering. Now it's five years of experience in mechanical engineering, particularly materials and with an extra focus in material science, having worked in the polymer space for the past 10 years, something like that, right? So you get further and further deeper into the rabbit hole of how much of an expert you can get it's it's an it's an endless path right you can always find more of an expert in any given scenario so that's one step the other step is you can always find more experts when it comes to copywriting in general i mean copywriting is an art some people are amazing at it they can write incredible copy and there's no limit to that and people are going to respond different to better better copy. They might hit the like button more. They might buy more. They might do more. Language is a driver of human activity. And it's a very human thing. So just because it can be 
emulated by a machine, which it can, doesn't mean that it's going to be entirely outsourced to a machine. So, in conclusion, right, this study is very ominous for translators. It says that the impact was direct, it was clear, it was very clear cut. After, and again, another thing is they're only analyzing six months of data prior to GPT and 10 months of data after GPT. So, we're, if you're going to be do a serious analysis, you need years and years of data, both prior and post. If you're going to do a serious analysis, you need to be able to judge from many different sources of income, direct clients, agencies, OLMs as well, but not as the only driver of freelance income, right? Again, if we, if we take a step back and look at the freelance community, most freelancers that resort to online language marketplace, online um, marketplaces, aren't necessarily the most experienced translators. It's an easier way to start finding direct clients. It's an easier way to start finding jobs. It's not necessarily how most translators build their career. In fact, I would argue a very small minority of, their, of translators build their careers through online marketplaces. So those are my thoughts, my opinions. Again, I don't mean to be critical or harsh about the paper itself, but I do question very fundamentally the findings and the overall hypothesis that translation is in decline and that expert translators have already left because they're more aware of what's going on. But we'd love to hear from you. What are your comments? What are your thoughts on this paper?